Hello everyone and welcome to the garden. So today I want to look at five different perceptions or beliefs that you might have or you've been told about growing a tropical style garden here in the UK. Really, why they're just myths and why you should absolutely go for it this year. This video isn't great, it's a really windy day, and as you can see, a tree is blown over next door on top of their shed. Definitely very, very breezy out here. The first myth that I want to address then is that a lot of these exotic and tropical looking plants are difficult to grow. It really isn't true, and just because a plant looks exotic or might be rare doesn't mean it's any harder to grow than a lot of the trees, shrubs, and other plants you see in pretty much every UK garden. Now, a lot of the plants that we hold now as hardy exotics were introduced in the Victorian era when they were put in big heated glass houses and they thought that was the only way they could be kept alive here. But through trial, error and occasionally necessity, a lot of them were tried outside and found to be perfectly hardy, tough and able to survive the UK climate really well. I think another factor to consider is that just because a plant looks completely alien or it might be from the other side of the world, it doesn't mean that the conditions, the climate, the weather where it's from is completely different to the UK. And if you look at tree ferns for example, say Dicksonia antarctica, now it's from forests around Tasmania, places like that, literally the other side of the world. But if you go to the various Cornish Valley Gardens or Kells Bay Garden over in Ireland, you can see they're actually thriving over here. Now I know we don't all have our own Cornish Valley Garden, and I certainly wish I did, but what I'm saying is, just do a bit of research before you get a plant, look at its key care requirements. So in the case of tree ferns, they need that regular moisture, that humidity, and if you can give them that, you'll find the really tough plants and very easy to look after for the rest of the year. There's a huge range of hardy exotics available, like the Trachycarpus fortunii pans behind me, that when they're planted in the ground here in the UK, literally need no extra care whatsoever. So you could build a garden entirely with these and not have to do anything over winter, other than maybe a little bit of watering in summer, but you could say that for any UK garden. So once you build the basis of the garden around these tough and easy exotics, you might have had something more unusual, what you'll find is with a bit of research, whatever the type of plant you're interested in, chances are there's a variety that will actually be really easy to grow and equally won't need any maintenance where you are. So a couple of recommendations will be Schefflera, this is Taiwaniana, it's very similar to the Schefflera's that you grow as houseplants but really tough and will take most UK weather as long as it's given a bit of shelter. And another recommendation, if you like the desert style planting, would be agave montana. Very similar to the big agaves that we can potentially grow around Cornwall, the south coast. But this one will take a lot more winter wet and it's really a viable choice for northern gardens. So hopefully, if you get nothing else from this section of the video, it's that there's a massive range of exotic and tropical looking plants you can grow in your garden with very little care and they'll look great all year round. If you've been watching my videos over the last couple of months, you'll have a good idea that most of the plants I grow don't need any winter protection. And a lot of these bamboos, palms, the cordyines, the formiums, they don't need any sort of care over winter. And then coat with a lot of snow, ice, frost, winds, they just take it in their stride. So despite the fact they look exotic, they're really tough, and it doesn't mean they're flimsy plants that can only come outside and grow well during summer. They might not always look pristine come spring, but they soon bounce back. And as long as you're careful with the choices of what you plant in your garden, this should be absolutely fine. Now it's no coincidence that the same group of plants that I said don't need any special care are also the same ones that don't need any winter protection. And if I was gonna give three top tips to create a tropical looking garden that doesn't need any winter protection, it will be firstly, prioritize these hardy, tough evergreen exotics. So your trachycarpus, the cords, the lines, formiums, fatsias, with these, you won't have any worries in winter whatsoever. And secondly, I would add in plants that maybe fit the exotic vibe, but aren't necessarily tropical plants in themselves. So if you're going to jungle garden, maybe look at hostas, rogersias, there's lots of tried and tested plants in UK gardens that if mingled with the right exotics and planted in the right ways to put plenty in, can really add a jungle vibe and not need any care whatsoever over winter. And thirdly, that would be grow more plants from seed. So if you know plants don't make it through the winter, then simply don't worry about them. Grow them from seed in March and April, grow them inside or in a greenhouse like you would with any other seeds, plant them out in May, enjoy them all summer long, and when it comes to October, compost them and you've got no worries whatsoever. 
That brings me neatly on to the next myth I want to address, which is that all UK tropical gardens look bare in winter. It definitely isn't true. And whilst I do have areas of bare earth that I'm going to use for planting the bananas, the cannas and the summer plants I'm growing from seed, I certainly grow a lot of tough, exotic evergreen plants. As you'll see through the garden, the bamboos behind me, the trachycarpus palms, it's the same group again of cordylines, formiums. Whilst we can't grow truly tropical plants through the winter months here in the UK, you can certainly emulate the look of the tropics through use of these tough evergreens. And as I looked at in my design video, if you prioritise the areas close to your house, the bits you walk past, the bits you see out the window, and you really put these colourful, tough evergreens there, you can have a garden that's more colourful than 90% of UK gardens all the way through the year. Now the next myth I'm going to look at isn't a case of which plants don't grow well here, but which ones have got the potential to grow a little bit too well, plants like the big bamboos behind me. And the myth is, all bamboos are invasive. Now to counter this, firstly, they definitely aren't. If you look at my video, Clumpers vs Runners, you'll see that there's specific varieties like Phagesias, which are clumping bamboos. They physically cannot run. They will get larger over time, but they're never gonna send out runners that pop up in next door's garden, the other side of the pavement, and create massive issues that way. So it's a bit of an irrational fear, really, and a bit of knowledge, you can choose the right varieties. If you've got a small garden or a restricted space, choose a variety like a Phagesia, and you won't have any issues with it running. Now, I do get the attraction with the big timber bamboos, this one behind me is a Phyllostachys vivax aureacolis, and the canes it has are just amazing. Real thick canes that can get as thick as a coke can potentially, and you just don't get that with the clumping bamboos. So for these, if you're gonna plant them, use something like this. Or when I say something like this, I would go for this. It's a proper bamboo barrier, two mil thick, and if you put that in at the time of planting, install it properly, yes, it takes a bit of effort, yes, it's an extra expense, but that bamboo won't run. So there's definitely varieties you can choose that are clumpers anyway. If you want to plant a runner, make sure you contain it and it definitely won't be an invasive problem. The final myth I wanted to look at today is that growing an exotic garden full of these tropical plants has to be really expensive. And whilst there's potentially a bit of truth in that, it certainly doesn't have to be that way. And if you check out my video on budget tropical gardening, you'll see loads of helpful tips I've put together to help you create your own tropical paradise without spending a huge amount of money. Now, if you're looking at buying big established specimen palms, there's going to be a cost to that. But the same could be said for any kind of garden. If you're looking at buying mature shrubs and established trees, they're going to cost a lot of money. However, a few tips I will give in this video are, don't be afraid of buying small. Some of these tropical plants, these exotic bamboos and palm trees, grow really quickly. So by buying them small, maybe spending 10, 20 pound a plant, within five years you can have a really impressive plant for your money. And a lot of these exotics grow faster than the UK sort of standard plants. So you can create that exotic jungle vibe really quickly in the scheme of things. Secondly, grow plants from seed. Plants like cannas, ricinus, you can get some really impressive plants in just one season from seeds grown in March and April. So it's definitely worth trying to save a lot of money that way. And thirdly, if you are going to spend some money and buy these tropical plants, maybe some large palms, get them from the right place. And if you want to have a look at my video, where to buy tropical plants in the UK, I look at my best suppliers and a few buying tips to ensure you're not wasting any money and you're spending as much as you have to to get the best plants for your garden. So thanks for watching. I'm off inside to get a warm drink because I'm absolutely freezing. See you soon.